Hello and welcome to the I Must Ask You a Question show. I'm Tim Nichols and this is my friend Jim Bardwell and we're going to shed some light on some relationship marketing strategies and tactics that you can use in your business today. So we've been working on a Finish Strong program, a series, and today we're going to focus on one of those steps, one of those tips, which is to re-engage your market. Jim, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, again, just like last week and the week before, there's a lot of, we've been talking a lot, a, a lot of, about a lot of re's, right? All the re's, right? Uh, re-engage your market, you know, re, you know, re, 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 re. And, you know, as I've been looking at this past year for myself and I'm going to make a goal for 2021. 2021's goal, and I know we're talking about re-engaging re, re right now, but 2021's goal is I don't want to let myself slide into the re-zone. You know, right. I'm, I'm going to concentrate on, you know, my, my partner and I were just talking about that. You know, we keep re-institutioning this and restarting this and re and it's like we scratching our heads and going, why we got to read? So, you know, I, I think that that maybe what what I'm going to start calling and it's funny how we use words, right? Tim? we start that's but but sometimes words are important and and the way we describe something can flip a switch internally or certainly in our subconscious, right? I certainly know this for a fact. All of your members would probably fit in this category, and. I'd say most of our listeners would fit in this category that we, we kind of know what we need to be doing. We've probably done it. And so again, this idea of restarting or redoing or re how about, how about this? What if we said we're going to continue doing what we should have been doing <laughs> that we know we should be doing. Right. And so, um, but but I, I guess at some point you have to look around and be honest with yourself. I know myself, you know, I've been concentrating so much on what's on fire, right? Oh my gosh, that's on fire. Oh my gosh, that's on fire. That's on fire. That, that I've definitely, I, I agree with you. I've let some of the things, the small things, the things that I know work, the things that I know are important, I've let them slide. So whether I want to make myself feel better and call it re or call it continue or call it start over or call it, you know, get back to basics or what have you. Um, that's exactly what I'm doing myself. I am, I am looking at, at everything and, and analyzing everything. And, you know, in this weird, strange time where you seem to have maybe a little more time on our hands, I don't know about you, Tim, but I seem to have a little more time on my hands than I do normally this time of year. Um, and so, you know, I know what I need to do. Re-engage my market. Yes. Continue talking to my market. Yes. Just start over again with what I should have been doing all along. Yes. So however we want to call it, we got it. We got to start looking at it. Well, I'll tell you, the re part is on me because I think what, and with me titling it this, but here's what I've seen. People have been distracted by negativity, by current events, things like that. And there is a pandemic going on. It's probably changed a little bit about how people would normally do business. And That's so right. I think it's been easily to, easy to get distracted from how you would normally do business. And so especially for business owners and entrepreneurs or anyone in a sales position that has to go out into the marketplace and build trust. So, my thought on that was if we're looking at how to finish strong, let's say maybe they've been trying to do some pivots throughout the year to try to engage their market. Mm -hmm. But number one, they're exhausted. Number two, they're distracted by a second wave that's come. Uh, you've got holidays. They used to, they used to use that as a likely excuse to call off the hunt, right? To back off. So that was my thought. And that was to re-engage your market. Now's not the time to take a mental holiday. You can actually, mm -hmm. your biggest growth could actually come during the holidays. And I've said it on other calls, the things you do today 
will affect you 90 days from now. So that's my thought and how we approach this. Yeah, I was on a coaching call this morning uh, with a team that's in an area that's under a pretty serious lockdown. And uh, one of the one of the tenets of my coaching is, you know, relationship building is kind of one of my specialties. And um, they hired me as a coach in that area. And of course, I trained them on the, you know, the keys of relationship marketing, how to build deep, meaningful relationships that are going to pay off dividends, not just for you, but for them as well. Right. And part of that is, you know, down down south, we call it visiting. You got to go visiting. You got to go see people. You got to go go sit in their office and talk to them. And again, another southern tradition is don't ever show up empty handed. So I teach these guys to, you know, go, go buy some Godiva chocolates or get some uh, fresh, fresh baked bread at a local bakery or, you know, some little thing. Uh, we've talked about this in the past. We call that a personality enhancer, right, Tim? We got to right. add a little something to help you out with your personality. And that is impossible right now. I mean, it's just not possible to do that. And so, you know, for me, even, I've had to figure out a new way to communicate, a new, a different way, an adjusted way. So maybe re engage my market. Maybe this is a new engagement. You know, maybe re-engage is the right word because I've got to try something different because the old way is just too cumbersome right now. This one guy, he went around door to door with all these gifts, these, these Christmas towers. He got to make Sam's, right? These little Christmas towers with cookies and pretzels and all that. Every place was locked up and shut down. Signs on the door saying, you know, due to COVID, we made a decision just to go ahead and shut down through the first of the year. Locked door. Mm -hmm. So he's like, Jim, what do I do? What do I do with all this stuff? You know, how am I going to, how am I going to get this to these people? What do I do? I said, well, I said, the purpose of that gift is to build goodwill. I said, take a picture of it standing in front of their door with their sign in the background. Say, so sorry I missed you. I came by to wish you happy holidays, a joyful new year. I'll see you on the other side of this. And by the way, I'll hold on to your Christmas gift until I see you. I said, when you send that text, that photo text, it's going to create the exact same emotion that you were trying to create by going there in person. You're going to put a smile on their face. Tim, I don't know about you, but if I was sitting at my desk and I shared with you this morning, today's been a hopping, popping day. And, you know, if I was just sitting at my desk in the, in the daily grind and somebody sent that text to me, I, I think I would like it. I would smile and I would be grateful for that. Even though I didn't get the gift, just knowing that they were thinking about me. So we definitely covered that this morning. Well, something I talked about, I talked about this morning in a training call with my members is the whole concept of the re-engage part is tweaking or shifting the paradigm of what you've been doing. Okay. Cause you've got to recreate top of mind awareness. Top of mind awareness goes away unless you stay with it, you stay on it. And granted, if they've been making phone calls, now might be the time to do virtual calls or videos or something like that. There's also th through like dub or bonbon, bon, you can actually do video and include it in emails. So you could mm -hmm. include video and emails. So it makes it through all the firewalls. And so it provides analytics and things like that. So you can see if they're even opening those or not, but it's a, it's a very real delivery of the message, including your facial expressions and all of that so that you can clearly communicate your emotions as, as opposed to just words. Right. So if, and let's keep going with that idea further. If you've been writing emails, you could also now is a great time to handwrite thank you notes or Christmas cards or something along those lines, you know, so maybe moving from the static or the invisible to a visible way of doing that. I like the idea of what you said about taking the photo in front of the door. But another thought was to do a video in front of their door <laughs> and even post it on Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever it is. And so just something to elevate their profile too, make them feel important. But that's a little twist that you could do to re-engage the market. And it would definitely create top of mind awareness for them. They would 
feel that deeper relationship, build your credibility and establish this sense of community with them. Yeah, I tell you, there was a, a gentleman I met years and years and years ago. And I tell you, you I've got my hat goes off to his to his uh, his uh, touch game because he don't give up. OK, this guy, I met him at a conference. Gosh, Tim, this must be 10 years ago. I mean, at least eight years ago. Still to this day. Now, this guy is a speaker and an author. And what he'll do is he'll get private audience with a person of influence. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody like Sir Richard Branson or or some big wig. Right. Right. And then what he'll sit down there with them and do is record a birthday greeting. You know, hey, I'm Jim Bardwell sitting here with my good friend, Sir Richard Branson. Hello, sir. I'm Richard Branson. You know, hey, we just both wanted to tell you how much how excited we are to tell you happy birthday. Happy birthday on your day of your birth. You're a great. And Richard Branson was like, you know, happy birthday, friend and everything. And. He sends me that one of those, and every year it's a different celebrity. He sends me one of those every single birthday on Facebook. He sends me one of those. And you've got popular friends, though. <laughs> What's that? I said, you've got popular friends, though. <laughs> I tell you, you know, you've got to have some deep friend pockets and some deep friend, uh, what they call a deep, a deep network to be able to pull that off every year. Because every year I look forward to my birthday thinking, who is he going to have in the video now? You know, who yeah. is he going to? It's just, and that's that's the kind of thing I'm sure at some point that was a re-engagement of his thought process of how do I reach people? How do I still to this day? I've never bought any of the stuff, but here I am talking about it. You know, here I am talking about it. I mean, I, I remember it, you know. Uh, and so I tell you, that's what I'm trying to encourage all the people I'm talking to, all of our members is to if, if you're hitting your head against the wall, Take two steps back. Look for a door. Look for a window. If all else fails, crawl over the wall. Maybe or just maybe you say, you know what, Mr. Wall, not today. Not today. I'll climb you another day. You know, there'll, there'll be another opportunity for me to get through this wall at some other time. I'm going to perhaps go look for an open door. Uh, so many of our members are just sitting there stuck. This isn't working. That's not working. I tell you, I'm just, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to, you know, if it, I, I'm too old to learn new tricks. I can't get into all this video stuff. I'm just, I'm just, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And I keep telling them, say, look, guys, do something. You know, uh, General Patton said it best, you know, a, a poorly, a poorly executed plan done with great violence will outperform will outperform a well thought out plan performed in laziness okay yeah. you know and so sometimes just just getting back it up and saying okay this isn't working i'm going to go attack it some other way i'm just going to throw something i'm going to throw spaghetti against the wall something's got to stick and you know, people say, well, that's not very good advice. I'm just going to be spending money, not going to know if it's going to work. Or I'm talking about the people that are stuck. Yeah. Tim, you and I have been talking about this. Some people are just stuck. I mean, they're just, hey, how's it been going? Oh, it's terrible. Oh, okay. Well, what's going on, man? Just That's just it. Nothing's going on. Got no calls, got no prospects, got no money coming in. I'm working at Home Depot at night just to pay the electric bill. This is horrible. It's terrible. I don't even know what I'm going to do. And um, that's, that's just a terrible place to be. I've been there before. You don't want to be there, you know? And the only advice I can give is just do something. Try something. Try something new. Try something different. Um, you know, one of, my, one of my people I coach with, he says, Jim, I can't do video. I can't. He goes, it's horrible. It's terrible. It's, he goes, I get bored looking at it. And it's me. He goes, I can't. He goes, I just can't do it. And so I said, well, you know, then have someone else do it for you. You can do that. Well, why would someone want to get a different video? I go, it's called a spokesperson. People do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's called advertising. I mean, people do it all the time. One of the most successful businesses we had in Nashville this guy never did his own commercials. You know who did all of his commercials? His kids. Oh, yeah. 
He had his cute little daughter. You know, come on down to such and such furniture. We got the best deals. I mean, perfect, wonderful. And who knows, that might have came out of the fact that he was uncomfortable doing it. You know, I don't know, I'll stick my kid up there and they'll never do it. So I, I encourage everybody to, to keep trying, try something new, try something different. And if you can't think of anything, you reach out to somebody. Tim, do you know how many people I've called in the last few weeks and say, hey, man, what are you doing? I don't have all the answers. I ain't got a tenth of the answer. I might have a tenth of a one percent of the answers. I don't have the answers, you know. But there's some smart people out there, and they're doing some different stuff. So and that, that's the calling off the hunt part I'm talking about because they get frustrated and that negativity sits in, or they get distracted and they think, well, it's just not going to work for me, or something along those lines. I heard some ridiculous statistics about the mental health hotline and what they're seeing, you know, as far as their statistics skyrocketing for people calling in with mental issues now, just from all of this. But I want to go back on some of the things you said and try and, and, and kind of speak into some ideas for uh, both well, any, any of our listeners, right? And listeners, please share your stories in the comments because we would love to hear what you're doing to re-engage your market. And going back to what you said though, so the example of the person that sends you the birthday video with Sir Richard Branson or whoever it is, one thing that I encourage that they do uh, is to do that on a local level, not just for birthdays, but what you're doing is leveraging networks. Uh, actually, there's a, uh, the, the, there's a, man with social media, Dennis Yu, who does, he does social media for the Golden State Warriors and Nike, people like that. And uh, Heather is in a program with him. And so something he encourages is leveraging networks on social media. This is something I've always done on a local level, right? But here's how you can combine the two concepts. So do a video with another local business owner, but you talk about them. Right. And if you were to go around and start doing videos this from your phone of other business owners and maybe the great things they do or how they're plugged into the community, maybe some nonprofits they're in, just anything. What that does is it elevates their profile, but it elevates your profile because people are going to want to know how to get into your videos. And so they start wanting to know you and you don't even have to talk about your own business. Right. And so. I've seen that on a local level. Um, let's see other things. Well, that covered a lot of ground right there as to what I was going to say, but there are different things that you can do in, in listeners. I encourage you to ask the questions in the comments because Jim and I would be glad to answer those for you just for different ideas that you could do. So feel free to do that. We're happy to enter, enter those conversations with you. You know, something else, a story I often tell when I give presentations to them is don't be afraid to be second fiddle. We all want to be the limelight. We all want to be the lead. We all want to have our name top billing, right? Well, right now, with the way things are going, don't be afraid to look for someone that is that is that seems to be fair in the storm a bit better and say, hey, is there any way that I can enhance you? Is there any way I can come along beside you and make you look better? Think that way. We're always, and again, most entrepreneurs, you and I have talked about personalities and personality types and disc profile. And, you know, most entrepreneurs are D's and D's don't. It's not in a D's nature to walk up to somebody and say, hey, I'd like to be second fiddle to you. Right. right. You know, uh, you know, Tim, when, when you and I started talking about this. Fantastic. This, this, is, this is, you know, it's Tim's show and you were nice enough to put my name up there too. But, you know, this really is your show and wonderful. I'll be on your show. Anybody wants me to be on a show? By the way, anybody listening, you want me to be on a show? I'll be on your show. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be second fiddle all day long. You know, so this is the story I tell in my presentation. So back, back 30 years ago, there was a fledgling network starting out. And it was called the Fox Television Network. 
<laughs> and they 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 were struggling. They didn't have any programming. They were playing a bunch of well, they had they had, they had bought Fox Studios, so they had the old Fox movies. So I don't Tim, I don't know if you remember when Fox first started out, all they did was play old movies because that's all they had. Mm-hmm. Okay, they just played all the old Fox movies, right? You know, 20th Century Fox. Dun, da, 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 dun, 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 that's all they had. Yeah. And they started struggling, they started getting some programming. Well, way, way back in 1989. They had a program, and it was she was a comedian from England. And her name was Tracy Allman. You ever heard of that name, Tracy Allman? She's a comedian. Yeah. She's from England. Well, she pitched a TV show, and they said, well, "Great, we need we need TV shows." And they said, "We'll give you a TV show." At the same time, this young um, this young guy had an idea of a cartoon. And it was kind of like the Flintstones. It was a, it was a, an adult cartoon to be played at night, and he pitched that idea to Fox too. And Fox said, "No, no, we're not going. We're not going to give you a whole half hour for your own show. That ain't going to work. Sorry, we can't do that." They called him back a few days later and said, I "Tell you what, we have this new show called Tracy Allman Show. It's a it's a it's a variety show, and we have some little breakout skit slots. We will give you, we'll give you five minutes for a breakout skit." Mm-hmm. And this guy's breakout skit was called The Simpsons. Ah. Now, most people have never heard of Tracy Allman. They don't, they've never heard of her TV show. They didn't know she had a TV show. But The Simpsons is now the longest running television program in the history of TV. Official. They are the longest one. Wow. They have been on the air continually longer than any other program in the history of television. So, Tim, what if that guy would have had the big head and said, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to be a five-minute breakout on a comedy show. No way. I'm, I'm front line. I'm big guy. I, mean, I can't do that. Don't be afraid, especially right now, guys, especially right now. If you want to do some co-advertising, some co-branding, some co-sponsorship, some co, you need as much co in your life right now as you can get. Okay. And part of re-engaging your market might be that, you know, maybe right now times are tough and you can't afford to go out there and market the way you'd like to. You can't afford to go out there and market the way you would want to. Okay. I don't know about in every market, but in here in in Boise, there is a a marketing firm called it's it's in the bag. It's in the bag. Now, they will do you a bag, Tim, just you. Your, pay, your face will be on the bag, which yours, yours will be awesome, especially the cartoon. <laughs> Tim, yeah. you know, on the bag, right? And, and all your stuff would be koozie, a Tim koozie, and a Tim pin, and a Tim shirt, and a Tim book, and a Tim, you know what I mean? Your whole bag. Right. That would be kind of pricey right now, right, Tim? Right. So, so what if you can't afford that? But what if you say, you know what, i tell you what I can do. I can afford to give you guys some ink pens to put in other people's bags. See where I'm going with this? Yeah. So at a fraction of the cost of what it would cost you to do your own, you can pay them a smaller fee. They will put your ink pen in with a bunch of other people's stuff. Maybe somebody, an insurance agent puts a koozie in. Maybe a, an investment broker puts you know, a little thing to hold your sunglasses on the visor. You know those little gadgets and gadgets we get at trade shows? Right. Maybe your people can reach out to other people in their network and say, hey, why don't we get together a little gift bag? I can't afford to do it all on my own. But what if each of us, now you wouldn't want to have more than one service in the bag, but six or seven different services and say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give these away for free to builders selling new houses. We're going to give them away free to companies that want to be able to give a gift to somebody for some reason. I don't know about you, but I'd love to be able to give away a free gift, mm-hmm. right? Go to the local pizza shop and say, I tell you what, everybody that buys a large pepperoni pizza with extra cheese, give them this gift bag. It's a free gift bag, right? Right. right. And so I encourage everybody to look for opportunities like that. When you start talking about re-engaging your market, all bets are off. All bets are off. Try something new. Try something different. I mean, an ink pen with your name on it. Well, I went up to my ink pens with my name on it. Anyway, I got ink pens with my name on them. They're not expensive. And I can throw that into a gift bag. Well, and if we're finishing strong, I'll say this. I mean, I I love that idea. 
But if we've only got 15 days before the year ends, you know, I would encourage everyone to start planning that for, you know, for next year as well, especially in the first quarter. But I'll share, I'll share something that one of our, one of our three million percenters did. Uh, she's a real estate agent and on the same day. She held a 5k that morning and she held a Santa and drive-in movie theater uh, event that night. I, I can't believe, <laughs> I bet she was incredibly exhausted, but, and, and these are two typical things that she normally does. But one thing that I've encouraged our Thrillman percenters to do is to include one another. So she had this 5k and she reached out within the program and outside of the program and went and got sponsors to come set up the tents and all that kind of stuff. They, they sponsored the event and then they got advertising for that, but then they volunteered to help with the event too. So they were engaging a lot more people than they could have by making phone calls or emails or do anything on social media. And so then that, that Santa and movie thing brought in a completely different group of people to mm. sponsor that, to, volunteer with that. Now, what does that do for her? Yeah, she didn't even have her name that much on it, but everyone knows who she is and they run to her anytime they need something. She's actually picked up some, some major listings out of that deal just because those she's included that didn't come from people that went to those events. Those people that she's included have become major referral generators for her to include them. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So, so well, again, I think that that um, anything that we can do to to be working towards that goal, the worst again, the worst thing we can be doing is is falling into the trap, like we keep talking about these calls over and over, is idleness. Do something. Do anything. Take action uh you know tell, tell me i would listen at a month from now i would much rather be listening to people's failures than listening to people talk about how they didn't do anything right what did you what did you do to finish strong last year uh we just december 15th we gave up we just gave up there was no point in it it's just just throwing a towel we're going to bump, we're going to kick this can to January 1, and we're going to get started again in 2021. That's what we're going to do. We're going to start over again in 2021. Uh, you know, I'd much rather hear the stories of some guy that says, well, I was listening to them crazy mustache guys in that mustache show, and they said try something. So, you know, I dressed up in a giant chicken suit, put a Santa Claus hat on, stood out in the middle of the, of the four-way and spun a sign saying, I'll do anything for anyone. You know, I tried, I, I was just doing anything. I was trying to get my name out there, right? I was just trying to make people remember that I'm still here. I'd much rather hear that story than on December 15th, I gave up and threw in the towel. Yep. You know, it, it, passivity, it could really hurt people right now. And uh, I think I think right now they, they've been dealt a blow and they're injured and they feel sorry for themselves and depression can set in stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I held a workshop this past week, a planning workshop uh, over for the next 90 days. It was a 90 day planning workshop and had had one one of the guys in there told me I would pretty much just called called 2020 off. You know, I, they had kind of canceled 2020 and just kind of given up for the rest of the year. And I saw them reignite in that workshop and say, hey, I've still got time. I can still do some things. And now they're fully engaged, but they're also getting ready for their next quarter. So that's actually big because the worst thing is, is you don't do anything now. Maybe you feel better about your feeding your depression right now. But 30 days, 60 days, 90 days from now, when you don't have any commissions, that's really going to affect you then worse than now. Yeah. And, and, you know, listen, this, this obviously is a serious topic and, and, and it's something that again, I think will be, uh, will show ramifications 
unfortunately, I know it will show ramifications even once we quote unquote get back to normal. But you know, when when the stock market crashed uh, in the early part of the of the nineteenth century, and you know, they called it the Great Depression. I remember one time I asked my grandmother, who was a little girl up there in the Great Depression, I said, I was small and I didn't under, I said, what does it mean, the Great Depression? What was depressed? What the Great Depression? What did that mean? And you know what she said? She said, Well, I tell you what it meant for us. Everybody was depressed. She goes, everybody. She goes, they call it the Great Depression. Now, of course, we know it was referring to the dip and the value of the dollar and the stock market. Da, da, da. But if you think about that for a moment, you look at what was happening in America at that time. It was a Great Depression. People were just losing everything and everything that they had built up to be all the most important things in the universe were suddenly stripped from them. And, and a lot of that's what's going on right now, Tim. People are finding out what truly is important. And, and, if, and if we've put all of, our, if we've put all of our, our attention, if we've put all of our, our effort, and more importantly, if we put all of our love into hollow things, and something like this comes along, and we're gonna have us a great depression. There's gonna be many, 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 many people who are depressed. And the only thing that's really nice about a depression, the one thing that's really cool, and it happens universally, is whenever you hold something down, you know, you remember when you was a kid, I don't know if you had any brothers, <laughs> I was the oldest brother, and I'd catch my poor little brother, and I'd grab him by the scuff of the neck, and I'm holding him down on the ground. I'd hold his little head into the ground. I'd hold him down, right? And he would, <laughs> He'd be swapping his arms and getting upset. Well, when I finally turned loose of him, he jumped about that high off the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd jump up and spring up, and man, he was mad. And he he would never just sit around and look at me. He would commence to running around and trying to find something to hit me with, and he was excited. I mean, he was mad, right? Right. And I think that a lot of us, I think that a lot of us, Tim, we're being held down by the scruff of the neck. We're in a place we really don't want to be. We are being depressed, right? Someone's pushing down on depressing us down. And we just got to, we got to prepare ourselves for that spring up. We got to start thinking. Luckily, my brother didn't put much forethought into it. You know, if the whole time I was holding him down, he was thinking, there's, there's that there's that garden hoe right over there leaning against the bar. As soon as he turns loose to me, I'm going to grab that garden hoe and whack him with it. If he had pre-thought all that, right? So when he found it up, he had a plan, I'd have been in trouble. And so I don't know about everybody else, but that's something I'm doing. You know, I, I know that we're being held down a little bit beyond our control, but we're going to get cut loose. Some that, that hand's going to come off our neck sooner or later here, pretty quick, I think. And what are we going to do with that energy when we get it back? What are we going to do when we get unbound? When we get, my wife and I were talking about that. What are we going to do when they make the official all clear? What are we going to do? What's the first thing we want to do when we get our when we get our, our unbridled freedoms back, right? Whether they be self-imposed, government opposed, whatever, fear. When when all that's removed, what will we do different? Well, and I don't think you're being rhetorical on that, but <laughs> yeah. what are you gonna do different? I, yeah. I'm making a big old long list. I don't know about you, Tim. I'm writing down a whole bunch of stuff I want to do. Right. You know? It's right. been it's been in February, it will be one year since I've been to a business conference. And, Dude, and I know you thrive on those. Thrive? That's like saying I've been held, I've been holding my breath in a swimming pool for a year. I mean, <laughs> I, I can't explain to you how just thrilled. I think the first conference we're going to have. Uh, anywhere near me is the International Brotherhood of Potato Pillars. I'm going to be there. I don't care. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to be at that conference. I don't know the first thing about peeling potatoes, but I'm going to be there. I mean, how hard yeah. can it be? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just can't wait for the world to open back up again. Uh, I don't know if you saw on Facebook this morning, but one year ago, 
today, one year ago, my darling bride and I were checking into our hotel in London, England. You know what? You can, nobody can do that right now. You know. Right. And so I, I, I'm definitely I'm planning. I'm planning. When they turn loose in my neck, I got some plans. Very good. Very good. And listeners, again, we want to hear your stories, too. We want to hear your stories of maybe your comeback plans or anything like that. We want to encourage encourage our other listeners, too, with with your stories of what you're doing different, maybe how you've pivoted, how you're reengaging your market. We want to hear that stuff. So, uh, you know, we we do want that. So let's continue the conversation in the comments. And I would love to just move forward. And, and since we've been encouraged here, just go out and um, get to work. But Jim, I want to hear more about Fiber Protector America and how, how that might be able to help our listeners. Well, fantastic. So again, what I do for Fiber Protector America is I am the director of sales, marketing, and education. Uh, what does that mean, Tim? My goodness, what's a big old long title? I had to get one of the business cards with the fold out thing to fit that whole title under my name. Uh, it's a big long title. What does that mean? It means I have the pleasure of communicating what Fiber Protector America is. And what they are is they are the company that facilitates the, the bringing over to the United States of one of the most fantastic products to ever come out of Norway. It's called Fiber Protector. And it creates an invisible shield around investment quality textiles and leather so that when you invest in textiles, when you buy that $20,000 rug or, or grandma gives you a rug that she's had in her house since you were a little kid and you think, I don't want anything to happen to grandma's rug. This product can be applied. It creates an invisible shield, but it's the way it does it. 100% green, healthy, safe for the environment, no poisons in it. And it does it in such a way that actually creates a batterostatic environment. Tim, do you know what that means? That means these yucky things we've got floating around, viruses and microbials and bacteria and all that stuff, it will not, it inhibits the growth of those on anything it treats. Some pretty cool stuff, high tech stuff. To learn more about this product, you can go to uh, www.fpamerica.com. That's www.fpamerica.com. Or you can reach out to me and I'll talk to you. Be careful. If you send me an email, I'm going to get on you. It's jim at fpamerica.com, jim at fpamerica.com. I've never asked you this before, but I've got a question for you. If somebody wanted to have that applied, how would they go about finding who could apply it? Well, it's very simple. We uh, On our website, we have a list of all of our licensees. Uh, the other thing, if they just send me an email, jim at fpamerica.com, let me know what market they're in. I'll match them up to a, to an applicator. If they are a large commercial entity, we actually uh, uh, take care of some uh, national applications through corporate. So one way or the other, we can get them covered. Well, that's kind of play on words, isn't it? We'll get them protected. We'll get them covered. Uh, but yeah, just reach out to me at jim at fpamerica.com. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you for being on our show. I thank Fiber Protector America for allowing you the time to be on our show and connect with all of uh, connect your licensees with all of our members as well. And I'll tell you a little bit about Three Million Percent. Three Million Percent is a peer advisory program for business owners, entrepreneurs, and professionals to learn from each other's victories, challenges, and experiences. And so, if you're interested in learning more about how to become part of that and move with us as a community and help each other grow. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to me at Tim at 3 million percent. That's the number three, spell out million and percent.com. So we look forward to hearing from all of you. And again, let's keep the conversation going in the comments. We want to hear your stories of victories, challenges, and, ex and, and experience. So in doing that, we look forward to seeing you Next Monday at two o'clock. We'll see you here. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye.